Um, might be interesting, short intro about UAC. Um, you see our logo, UAC is turning 15 this year. And we are not so happy because normally we would invite all friends and actually Augsburg University is one of the oldest friends and partners of UAC. So colleagues from Augsburg really uh, accompanied our journey from around 300 students to our current size. Uh, we have now uh, around 7,000 students. So UAC's background is we are the first jointly co-funded joint venture university between a mainland university and a Hong Kong university. So our parent institutions are Beijing Normal University and Hong Kong Baptist University. And we started off in 2005 uh, as the first liberal arts college in China after founding of the People's Republic. Um, so the mission actually is to provide the Chinese educational landscape with alternatives to the normal public university system to have also smaller size classes and we really have a very strong liberal arts commitment in UIC. Uh, obviously, we are not like a US liberal arts college so one goal is to integrate in a dynamic way also the elements of traditional Chinese culture into our model. So uh, that is the task and we are striving for it and flourishing. Um, currently, you can see that's a bird view perspective of our current campus. We moved here two years before and Actually, uh, starting from next year, we will have a second campus for research. So UIC is really growing in terms of programs, operations, and also opportunities we can offer to students and interns. So more and more programs are trying to recruit interns for their programs. And uh, we are very proud to announce for next year, we can offer 44 uh, placements in basically all kinds of programs. Yeah. So in, in general, uh, well, Zhuhai is basically the mainland side of Macau, and we are here in an area that is really developing rapidly. So that's one of the fastest growing urban areas worldwide. Uh, we call it the Greater Bay Area. So that is the ambition here to become similar to San Francisco Greater Bay Area. So that's the conglomerate of all those cities. So Shenzhen is just uh, an hour away, Guangzhou, uh, Zhongshan, Dongguan, Hong Kong, Macau. So all those cities are interconnected. And uh, for the future, for, for our graduates, but also for international staff. So there are very interesting programs to recruit international talent. So there are many opportunities in, in this region to develop while being at the same time, a very nice coastal city. So Zhuhai is one of the nicest cities in, in China to live. So we have good air quality. We are bordering a coast. It's very green, uh, many things you can do by bike. Climate is uh, subtropical. So most of the time of the year, it's pretty hot. And uh, then during winter, maybe January, February, the temperatures can drop to maybe nine degree Celsius. That's still not very cold, but uh, there is no heating in, in the houses here. So sometimes it can feel very cold. But according to our experience, interns from Minnesota uh, will even in December and January still wear t-shirts. So <laughs> I think that should not be a problem for you guys. <laughs> um, we have a new president for the past two years. So Professor Tang Tao, uh, he is a very famous mathematician in China. So he's a member of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and chair professor. Uh, so his uh, job and ambition now is to develop UAC to the next stage of operation. So the first 10 years were basically consolidation, build a student body, um, very teaching oriented and now step by step we are also going to have some more research labs, especially in uh, computer science, data science, so we have uh, several research facilities, etc. Um, well, he also has a very international background, so he, he was working at Simon Fraser in Canada, 
He used to be a dean in Hong Kong, uh, vice president in SUSTEC in Shenzhen. So uh, most people have backgrounds like this in UAC. Also most people you will be or would be working with. So all faculty members uh, somehow have an internationalized background. Yeah, so that's what I just mentioned. So uh, UAC tries actively to also be a part of the development in the Greater Bay Area uh, by providing international education, well-rounded graduates, bringing in people from all, all over the place. And um, very important is also we promote whole person education. So that's our model of a holistic approach to education, which means we do not only train our students in their majors. That's very similar to Augsburg University. But for us, it's also important that students, for example, take courses in service learning, emotional development, uh, experiential arts, um, sports, etc. So there's a whole range of courses and actually students do get credit for this kind of courses uh, just to broaden the, the overall horizon and also explore maybe talents they were not aware of when entering UIC. Um, in addition to the whole person model, we have a four point education model. So that's really the connection between uh, so imagine the student is in the center and then it's the connection between parents, school and society, which means uh, also our career development would fall under the four point education model really to be a, an active and, and lively part of, of our society and our global networks. Um, currently we have 30% uh, overseas, overseas staff. Um, 34% are from Hong Kong, Macau, and Taiwan, and 36% are from mainland China. Uh, that's a pretty good mix. So we really have a very internationalized teaching body. Um, that's much more than in other Chinese universities. So, And of course, obviously, many international staff also work in our English center. We recruit uh, worldwide. Currently, we have 30 countries represented on our campus. Yep. I just, we just picked some pictures. How, how does it look like here? So we have a very beautiful campus. Uh, it's in the middle of, of lychee gardens, actually. Uh, so there are hills, there's water. Um, we have great sports facilities. And um, so I already explained the part, uh, Zhuhai, the location, and then, well, what, what, what is in there for a potential intern? So we offer this opportunity to graduates from our partner schools. Um, so it's really a very good step into the working world or I don't know, some people really come here to take a gap year, learn a new lang language. Some, some interns join us and said, I just wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to see something completely different before I go to grad school. Uh, other people already come, okay, I, I really would like to develop a career in Asia. Uh, all is welcome in UIC for whatever reasons you come. Uh, for us, it's important, be open-minded and um, for interns, we offer Chinese language courses, so that is compulsory. So you will get courses in Chinese language and culture. So you are basically, you come as, uh, as an intern student. So you will come on a student visa, which means the educational part is important for us. Uh, that's one of the parts of the internship that you really get to know China. On the other hand, you will be paired with faculty um, or in offices, uh, to work, so it's it's really um, a full time week. So currently, we expect interns to be on campus 35 hours per week, and then the job assignments can be very diverse. So many interns will be placed in our English language center. There, obviously, you will work directly with our students. Uh, so our interns run the speaking corner. Um, the reading and writing center, they will assist the teachers in class, etc. Um, if you have a more academic photo focus, you should 
just check whether we have offerings in the division you would be interested in. Then you will have probably a more academic assignment and really uh, directly work with a professor and prepping classes, etc. cetera. Uh, we also do have uh, placements in offices that are not academic. For example, our media and public relations office uh, always recruits an intern. Our learning resources center, actually our human resources office uh, this year also for the first time would like to recruit an intern just to have this international element also in the team of our HR people. Um, I myself, we, I also recruit a 50% intern, so IDO will always have an intern and normally in the second year because it's easier um, for interns who already have been here for one year and some will decide to return and normally I will try to win one of those interns to be the liaison for, for guys like you, you know, to, to share some first-hand experience. How, how does it feel from the perspective? We sometimes miss this after so many years. So apart from the working setting, of course, most interns will just seize the opportunity to travel, to travel China, to travel Southeast Asia. Uh, yeah, they, they really do travel all over the place. Um, that is completely fine in the vacation time and when there is no COVID. So obviously currently this is, is uh, very difficult. We will have a COVID slide at the end. So what is the current status and, and what are we expecting to happen until summer? But normally, of course, interns will, will travel. Uh, they make friends with our students, staff, faculty. So some interns saw more of China than I did actually after 10 years that's really up to you. Um, you can apply for a second year internship, um, but that's about it. So we limit to two years. Um, so intern is, is not a career, so it's a stage. Some interns will prepare for grad school, uh, some will return, some will get, for example, teaching English as a second language qualification. Some former interns actually work as teachers in UAC now. So they left for a couple of years or got a master's in teaching English and, and then they will come back. And actually I also do have connection with some Augsburg alumni. So the connection to UAC remains uh, over the years and it's great to see what they do with their lives. and. What we can see, all of them benefited from the intern experience in China. So many of them have to do something with international education or work in some China related job placements or the internship in China helped them to get their first placement because they had some language skills and really made their application outstanding. So good. Um, so we operate in two semesters. During the semester, you're supposed to be on campus and also during uh, examinations, interns will have to help to invigilate. Uh, our normal working week is Monday through Friday. Weekends are off except the examinations. That might be a little bit different, for example, if you work in our media and public relations office. Of course, if we have evening events or etc., so then you might have slightly different working hours, but normally you can always confirm this with your supervisor. Um, we have a video of former interns. I hope I can play this now just to give you some, some statements. What do they say and what do our students say about interns? Let's give it a try. I don't have any sound. No sound, oh my God. UIC currently has four divisions. So uh, we have business and management, humanities and social sciences, science and technology, and culture and creativity. Um, all divisions take in interns. And even uh, if they're on the list we send to Andrea and your team, if, if there's not your dream placement, just drop us an email. Uh, so last time, for example, we, we had an intern ask, well, but I'm a musician. And then actually we talked to the division and said, of course. So sometimes you get a placement even though it's not listed. Um, then we have our general education 
office. So all students like in Augsburg University as well have to take gen ed courses. They also do have placements. Those are very often courses in history and civilization, philosophy, uh, things like this. Then of course the English language center, Chinese language center, and what is here hidden? Um, yeah, and whole person education office. So if you're more a hands-on person and outdoorsy, uh, they also always recruit one intern in environmental awareness, for example. So there's all kinds of uh, placements. If you need details, I will show, show you our contact uh, details at the end. So we have one colleague who will look into the, our intern account every day. Uh, then we can give you maybe more tailor-made uh, information if you, if there's a certain position you, you're interested in. Um, of course, important is uh, the compensation. So you will be on a stipend and that stipend is a monthly uh, allowance of 1,200 Chinese yuan for housing. So normally interns will share an apartment and um, well, you will have to add a little, but if you share, for example, with two other interns an apartment, you basically can almost already cover the rent in an area it's called Horizon Corp. Many uh, international faculty live there. UAC is operating shuttle buses to Horizon Corp. So you, you will not have to rely on public transport or, or bike. So that's a very convenient place to live. Inside that living area is a supermarket and swimming pool and gym. Uh, so all kinds of facilities are available. Um, you get 6,500 uh, Chinese yuan per month as a stipend. And that looks, I know, not much if you're in the US, but in China, you can have a very comfortable life with that amount of money. Just as a reference, for example, in a public university, that's what a assistant professor earns per month. Yeah. So, um, which means that's really a, a good starting salary in, in China yeah, for, for graduates. And you really can have a comfortable life with this. Um, and then you get up to 11,000 Chinese yuan for airfare, so for reimbursement of your ticket, um, depends on how smart you are in finding tickets. We anticipate tickets are going to be more expensive next year if traveling is possible. So that is going to be difficult. In addition, you will have to calculate there will be some costs for visa and uh, health tests, etc. Uh, that is not covered by the school. But overall, uh, I think it's a very comfortable package we can offer. Um, and here's some information on the Chinese language, culture, history and development program. So you will have Chinese language classes. Um, our Chinese language center also organizes field trips and cultural experience, etc., cetera, um, to make you more familiar with Chinese culture. The requirement from our end is if you want, if you're planning to apply, um, we have online application. If it does not work, sometimes service block. Uh, you can also still do it on paper and send us the documents. So uh, normally we expect a GPA of 3.0. Uh, if you have a 2.9, you should give it a shot, shot anyways, but that's the orientation line. You will need a one letter of recommendation of, of a professor and um, one short letter of recommendation, for example, from Andrea, from International Development Office people, um, just that you're, you're ready for an abroad experience. So the purpose of this is we want to make sure that, that you can have a successful year in UIC. So if you're completely un unprepared for living abroad, uh, China might still not be the best chance to give it a try. So you will experience culture shock and we have people to support you um, but you yeah you have to be open for this experience
Yeah, so you will also need a CV and, and a transcript. So we, we send the details of documents we would need uh, out. Uh, you still have time. Our application deadline normally is at the beginning of our spring semester. That's after the Chinese New Year. And then the department who would like to recruit you will invite you to a short video or phone interview. Uh, and then you will get confirmation. And just for, to give you a timeline around April, our HR office will get you a form that is called GW202, et cetera, to start the visa process. So sometimes things take longer than expected. So that's normal, just pre be prepared for this. <laughs> um, So for next year until 5th of March, the application. And if you have questions, please also use this email account, internationalintern at uacedu.cn. We changed domain yeah, to CN from HK. OK, yeah, that's important. Um, yeah, uh, we still can receive Sorry, what happened to my... Oh, yeah. I'm not sure what happened to my PPTs. Um, I will finish this. So um, we, we still can receive the HK uh, emails, but uh, CN is, is better. So we, we had to change, for example, for Zoom. Um, that made a huge difference, our domain uh, in using Zoom. Ah, sure. Hey, Katharina, can I ask a question? So Sitlali is asking, yes. is it preferred yeah. that you get students or would you get that you would get interns who are who have just finished undergrad or would you allow for a student who comes maybe let's say one year or two years after they've graduated? Both okay. It's either way is fine. Either way is fine. Typically, students will do this directly after graduation, some sort of in, in the gap between bachelor's degree and graduate school. But we we did have and do have interns who already have other experiences. Um, it's also OK. Uh, we also allow interns with a master's degree. Mm. Actually, some programs even do prefer master's students. Um, especially in some research oriented programs like like psychology etc so they are also very happy to um, recruit masters or our uh, history people so we are pretty open okay um we just have to be clear um it is so internship is is one year and then you need to get for example teaching license etc um, the thing is, it is extremely difficult in China to get a work permit without work experience. So some interns will use one year or two years at UAC and achieve this. But um, if you just think, okay, I go to UAC and then I find myself a job, <laughs> uh, that is comparatively difficult, like in every country, like in right. the US. So to get really um, legal working papers is difficult. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. But it's not, I, I hop over and then I get the coolest job ever in Shenzhen. So um, yeah, just to sure. be clear. <laughs> so a couple um, other questions are coming in here on the chat. Yeah. So Terrence is yeah. asking if you typically get a lot of graduate applicants. So those students who maybe are have a master's degree already or something. Do you get a lot um, of those applicants or? Especially from the UK, we had four master's students from, from Swansea in the last batch uh, this year, unfortunately. So we, we only have three interns at the moment, and all of them are second year interns who were in China when COVID broke out. We have another three interns working online, and all others could not get a visa. Mm, yeah. And uh, while well, traveling is just not possible right now, mm. uh, that's the current situation. Sure. So, yeah. The, the majority will be will be uh, undergraduate graduates, but we, we do have master's applicants and I anticipate in the future um, this proportion is going to grow, especially, for example, if there are research projects, etc. 
So we really try to, to have interns in, in all parts of university life. It's sure. really a pity that you could not see the video because um, our students give some statements how important it is. We will, we will see it. I will make sure that yeah. we can send it to the students who are yeah. here today. Um, one other question which Terence is asking about whether students are given, the applicants are given priority if they are a graduate student or have a teaching certification versus if they have just finished their undergrad and they do not have a teaching certification. Is there uh, a priority for one or the other? Not really. So uh, there will be a holistic assessment of, of the applicant. Uh, a very important part is the motivation. So it's not that automatically someone with a master's degree will have the better recruitment mm -hmm. chances. So um, if you write a good letter of motivation or a good statement and do well in the interview. Um, so I, I think those are really the successful applicants. Great. If you show I, I have the devotion and I really want to become a part of, of this college and the community. So we also have this sense of, of, of community. So we want you to become UICers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. And then also very important, your willingness to, to work with students. Mm -hmm. That's obviously a very important part of the internship that you convince the person interviewing you that, yeah, you will really work with the students and they can learn from you. Important is, for example, uh, if you apply for the English uh, Language Center, um, most programs, will look for someone with strong writing skills. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, so e including the staff body, yeah, most people here are second language speakers. So sure. native speakers or native near speakers with excellent writing skills can always find a placement. Uh -huh. Well, that's good <laughs> to know because I happen to know that both students on this call are excellent writers. So that's, that's very yeah. good. Yeah, it's, um, it's I don't mean to interrupt you. You, I think you no, might want to do. speak now about yeah. the COVID piece, but yeah. Mm. So for what we can see now, I just said uh, this year, unfortunately, we we had to advise interns to remain in their home countries, and those who were out of the country, actually, we asked them to go back to their home countries uh, because of international diplomatic issues. Uh, somehow. If you are as a international person in a foreign country, it, everything is so much more difficult than in your home country. Um, apart from this, uh, the authorities did not allow Chinese schools. So we uh, also our international students, uh, one is still outside the country out of safety reasons. So. Uh, currently, the things are a little bit changing. So step by step, we could uh, get back our international staff. So all entries were banned after March 28th. And I think uh, maybe four weeks ago, step by step, you can get a PU letter, a staff member, and we have around 85% of our staff back. So it's still very difficult. We still cannot get back our interns from the UK. So some countries have been banned again. Um, currently, if you obtain successfully a visa and are lucky enough to get a flight, currently the rule is you have to undergo 14 days centralized quarantine. Um, for this, UIC has no influence. You will be appointed to a quarantine hotel and that quarantine really means quarantine. Uh, you cannot leave your room. So it's not like home quarantine and if you can cannot take it anymore, you just step out and take fre fresh air. This is not, not going to happen. You're really locked up. Um, people share positive experiences. So it's, it's not like being in prison. You're, you will be well treated and every day somebody will see after you what you need, etc. cetera. Uh, but of course, as an entry experience, uh, this is tough to be 14 days alone in a room. Um, you will have to agree uh, to have a so-called health code on your phone. Uh, so that's currently everywhere in China. You have to scan QR codes and they will use your mobile data 
to see your movements, so your locations, and only if you have a green code, you will be allowed to campus. So if you have uh, problems, for example, and say, okay, this is violating my privacy, then I would say, don't come. That's a requirement. So if you're not willing to accept this, that's just the rule in China, then, then there is no way to bypass this rule. Um, and then currently before departure, you will have to do a COVID test within, I think, two days. And then upon arrival, there will be two more. Uh, as far as I know, the COVID tests are not exactly pleasant. So that's the current situation. Uh, we decided to start our prom promotion anyways, because we are really hoping that there will be a vaccine until next year. So. So we have to keep this in mind. So we have more, almost a complete year from now until your internship will start. So normally you will enter China at the end of August or in early September, which means, to be honest, I have no idea what the regulations will be by then. For all we can see from newspapers and government reports um, might be much better than it is right now. So if it were to recruit you for January, uh, I would probably say uh, not worth the while. Uh, but I think in summer, so we will have to live with this and, and, and be resilient and maybe have a plan B at hand. Um, I'm modestly optimistic that we can work this out for next year. In general, uh, as a school and, and all authorities, um, I, I gather there are some news from China being restrictive to foreigners. That is definitely not true for UIC. Uh, we miss our interns and um, my office and especially our HR office uh, we were working day and night to get those people back and uh, foreigners are, are not discriminated on our campus for being just from another country where people maybe have other ideas on wearing masks. In general, uh, in China, this is also something you have to accept, accept here. Really, it is common sense. Everybody is wearing masks. So that's not a choice. You will experience social pressure if you don't. For example, in public buses, in supermarkets, etc. So, and, and the social distancing. So, um, it's really everybody is just doing it. We don't know how it will be next year. So, and on campus this semester, we started on campus, and for the first first two weeks, everybody wore mask everywhere and any time except you were eating. And then after two weeks, since we um, did not allow the students to leave the campus, everybody got a COVID test and then we could release the rules. And now the campus is COVID free and now you can, of course, open air, etc. cetera. You, you do not wear a mask, but for example, in elevators or canteens, uh, sports complex, etc., cetera, uh, this will be still expected. Um, the campus has been made COVID safe, so we have everywhere the social distancing marks, we have uh, glass windows in the canteens, a lot of automatic self-service machines to, to uh, limit personal interaction. Everywhere you have hand sanitizer, soap, uh, the campus is being, has been completely disinfected and so we have much stronger rules about disinfection, especially in elevators and classrooms. So basically after every class, all windows have to remain open. And then um, I think twice a day, somebody will disinfect the classrooms and, and the keyboards, et cetera, in, in the classroom. So I think what can be done in terms of keeping the campus safe has been done. Uh, the background is if we, for example, have a COVID case here on campus, I, I think uh, we have to close the whole campus which means uh, that's priority. Um, we have entry and access control. So currently everybody is getting a temperature check. So we have those body scanners. So you like in airports, so you go to those temperature scanners, et cetera. Um, 
I think some, some rules might remain, just general hygiene. We do not only have COVID, it's also flu season now, norovirus, et cetera. Um, but that's the current situation. Um, but other than that, life is as far as it can be normal now in China. Yeah. So you can do some trips. So you just have to monitor if there's a local outbreak. For example, in Shanghai, you cannot go to Shanghai. But otherwise, uh, you, you can do whatever you want. Um, good. Currently, we are not allowed to have big gatherings mm -hmm. in school. So they are just restrictions. Um, yeah, I think it's basically in, in all campuses pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah. If you want to enter campus, close campus areas, you just have to follow those rules. 